Okay, looking at practice 10-2, this was the area of a trapezoid. And the area of a trapezoid, of course, was area is equal to one half the height plus the sum of the bases. So it's area equals one half height, and the bases are A and B. Okay, so on number one, one, two, and three are real simple. The area would be one half of 10 times nine plus 16. This would be the area is equal to one half of 7.5 times nine plus 22. And number three would be the area is equal to one half of seven times four plus 13. Of course, I have those worked out and I've given those to you. And then going on through number five, we're doing the same thing. So number one, the area is equal to one half of 10 feet, 16 please, feet plus nine feet. I added these two together. It does not matter how you multiply them together. Of course, they're associated, but you add these first and it was 125 point, or 125 feet squared. Number two was 116.25 meters squared. There's the answer to three. Number four, they give you the two bases, so that's what you add together, multiplying times five and taking one half. That's supposed to be a two there, one half. I don't know where I got a one fifth. And of course, that one was 340 centimeters squared. And number five, adding the two bases, 15, multiply times 5.2 and take half, you got 39 inches squared. Okay, the next problems are a little trickier because you have to find the height. They didn't give us the height in number six. We have to determine the height. Well, this is a right triangle. This is eight inches, so this little piece here is eight inches, meaning this side is 10 inches of the right triangle. So 10 inches and the height, using the Pythagorean theorem, we can find what the height is. H squared plus 10 squared is equal to 11 squared and that'll give us the measure of the height. The height happened to be the square root of 21. Okay, And then when I worked that problem out, here's what I ended up with on number 6. Once I got the height, the square root of 21, then I was able to say the area is equal to 1 half the square root of 21 plus the two bases, 8 and 18. 8 and 18 were the two bases. That's 26. And then half of 26 is 13, so 13 squared is 21. I could just leave it in, in radical form. If you did it as a decimal, um, let's see, did the instructions say? Yeah, the instructions said leave it in radical form, simplest radical form, so that's what I did. Number seven works similarly. You have to find this height, okay? And of course, we have the sides of the triangle. H squared plus two squared equals six squared. That's gonna give me the height. This base, since this is 11, this will be 11 feet. So the base is 13. The whole distance is 13. So what that height is, number seven, the height, when I solved it for number seven, eight squared plus two squared equals six squared, so I got four square roots of two for the height. So since that's the height, four square roots of two, and the bases are 11 and 13, that's 24. So 24 times four divided by two is 48 square roots of two feet squared. So that's the way that one worked. So first I had to determine what the height was on so six, seven, and also number eight. And number eight, this they don't show the height. We have to draw in the height. When we draw in this height here, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So instead of the Pythagorean theorem, we're using it as a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, so what we have to do first is since 30, 60, 90, that's the short leg. That's the hypotenuse. So this happens to be five centimeters. That's the height, okay? If that's five centimeters, then this measure from here to here, not the 14, but from here to here will be five square roots of three. That's the long leg. So that means that this side down here is this same as this length here, which is 14 minus five square roots of three. So 14 centimeters minus five square roots of three. Well, I could say 14 minus five square roots of three centimeters. Just put the units on there one time. That would make it a little bit easier. Okay, so then when I do the work, I have it over here on, on my worksheet. Of course, you have a, should have a copy of this. It's on the internet. 
Uh, this is 10, that was 5, 5 square roots of 3 for the long leg, so this was 14 minus 5 square roots of 3. So now when I'm solving this, the area is going to be 1 half the height, 5, this was 5, and the bases are 14 plus 14 minus 5 square roots of 3. The other base, the one at the bottom, is 14 minus 5 square roots of 3. So that gives me 28 minus 5 square roots of 3, okay, and of course this thing worked out sort of odd, 5 times 28 and then 5 times um, 5 and then divided by 2. So I got 70 minus 12 and a half square root of 3. And of course I don't like mixing decimals and fractions. I wrote that answer that way. Of course you could write it if you had it in decimal form. I didn't put it in decimal form because the answers were asking for radical form, but I could have written it a little different I guess to make it. I could put 70 minus uh, 25 square roots of 3 over 2, like that, or you could have said 140 minus 25 square roots of 3 over 2. So either one of those would have worked in radical form, uh, but I just went ahead and mixed the decimal with the radical in that particular problem. Okay. Now some of the other problems on this sheet were really simple because uh, number 9, 10, and 11, these were just areas of a kite, which is one half of the product of the diagonals. This diagonal times this diagonal. And all you have to do to get the diagonals is add 2 and 6.5, 4 and 4, so 8 and 4 and 8 and 8.5 divided by 2. Multiply that together and divide by 2 gave you the area. This one of course was 8 and 6 multiplied together divided by 2. This one was 15 and 12 multiplied together and divided by 2. And then 12 and 13 follow the same guidelines, you just area is equal to one half D1 and D2, so that's the two diagonals. Uh, so I've written the answers on the worksheet here, and that's, there's, uh, oops, let me slide that over. There's nine, it's 34 square roots, uh, I mean 34 feet squared, because one half of 8.5 feet and eight feet is 34 feet squared. 10 was one half of six centimeters and eight centimeters. And the last one was um, uh, number 11, one half of 12 times 15 is 90 centimeters squared. Okay, uh, 12 and 13, of course I have the answers to those two also. So there's number 12, one half of 12 feet, three feet is 18 feet squared. Number 13, one half of 16 meters and 14 meters is 112 meters squared. And then number 14. Number 14, they're giving us a rhombus instead of a kite. The formula is the same. The area of a rhombus is one half of D1 times D2. It's treated just like if it was a kite. So the area is one half of 25 feet squared and 22 feet squared, which is 275 feet squared. This one, of course, number 15, because we know the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular, we know that these are right triangles. Well, if that's four meters, this is four meters. So we have to find the other diagonal. So I need to find this measure. And I can use the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus four squared equals six squared, to get this segment, double it, and I have that diagonal. So this diagonal is eight, and this is going to be x times two. Okay. So uh, let's look at how I did that one on number 15. Here's where I'd use the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus 4 squared equals 6 squared. And I got x was 2 square roots of 5. So that means the diagonal, the whole thing, would be 4 square roots of 5. So this was 2 square roots of 5. This is 2 square roots of 5. So this diagonal is 8. This diagonal is 4 square roots of 5. So 8 times 4 square roots of 5 divided by 2 was 16 square roots of 5 meters squared or 35.8 meters squared. This section did not say you had to leave your answer in radical form so that's why I went ahead and changed it to 35.8 meters squared. Number 16 is uh, similar but we only have one diagonal is 10 so we have to draw the other diagonal. That means this one has been split in half 5 and 5. These are right angles so again, we're going to find the diagonal using the Pythagorean theorem, or half the diagonal. We have to double it to get the whole diagonal. So here's what I did with this one. OK, 
Okay, this is number six, uh, 16, yes. All right, so to solve for x, x squared plus 5 squared equals 8 squared. That's 8 inches, by the way. And then x squared plus 5 squared, and I got the square root of 39. I just left it as a radical to start with until I plugged it in the problem. That's just the measure of this side. So together, that's two square roots of 39. So half of 10 was 5 times 2 is 10 square roots of 39 inches squared or 62.4 inches squared. So that's how I did that one. And then number 17 was just find the area of the rhombus, and it gave you the two diagonals. So that one was a straightforward problem. We didn't have to use anything uh, special there. Just multiply them together and divide by 2.